I'd like to call the meeting in order at exactly 6 p.m. If you please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes. Presentations? Yep, we're going to start Mr. out with. Mr. State. Sorry. We're going to start out with um, Tracy Shady and Noel R. Curie presenting the district special education plan. So this plan was approved in the July meeting. Uh, but we thought this would be an appropriate time to present it to the board. And because Noel has signed up to conduct her administrative internship this year, um, she's been working hand in hand with Tracy. So Tracy has been happy to do that part of this, just so that you can see who she is in her. Initiate the next All right. Okay, so we thought that we would start our presentation just by sort of reviewing what our guiding principles are. Our guiding principles are taken from the New York State Education Department. They released a blueprint for educating students. And this is where we really start and try and focus our programs on. So some of those things that we're really working toward are, number one, students engaging in self-advocacy. That's an area I think that we're doing really well with. Um, kids are starting to attend their own meetings when they're around fifth grade, really trying to get their input. And this goes right into the next, where we're trying to make sure that families feel like they are in a partnership with us and they're part of the team. Um, that's a really hard meeting for parents to come into, so we don't want them to come in and feel like we've already made decisions for them. Um, the next two areas are teachers and our special ed teachers are really working together to try to make sure that we are giving every opportunity for all of our students to learn and that we're using strategies that will help them to be successful in our classrooms. Um, our entire district is really working on these multi-tiered systems of um, behavioral and academic support. This is what helps us keep kids in the classrooms and keep kids where they can do their best and we can give as much support as we can. Um, number six is sort of the challenge of all schools and that's really working toward more and more inclusion. This is a hard thing to do. It takes a lot of staff, it takes a lot of planning but we're working on getting there and we think that we can continue to make improvements. And lastly is um, career development and work-based learning. We've made a ton of gains in this area. We this year have partnered with Saba. We've partnered with MVCC for some of their postgraduate transition programs. Oh, and with the art um, programs, kids are going out into the community, getting job experience and training. Um, and this, this blueprint really was um, put out by the state back in November of 2015, but those principles are still totally relevant and we're constantly revisiting those, making adjustments, um, making sure that we're not losing sight of any of those principles. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a good blueprint for us to follow, it's super helpful. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit just about the continuum of services. Um, in district, we're really not you know, shifting gears in any major way. Um, we like to keep kids as close to the general education programs as possible and then layer in services as needed, but we really never jump from A to Z. We're always trying to stay as close to gen ed as possible. Um, we provide related services, speech, OT, PT, counseling, vision services, um, you know, whatever the kids um, require. Consultant teachers as needed, um, and that can be either direct or indirect. Um, resource room support where students are receiving supplemental instruction, um, integrated co-teaching um, that varies um, in the different buildings from year to year. Sometimes it works well with a certain grouping of students, sometimes it doesn't and it phases back out. Um, and then we also have our special classes um, in district. Um, we run 15-1 and 12-1-1 special classes. Um, I am gonna piggyback a little bit on that, that statement about inclusion. Um, there, it, there is a huge push for more inclusion for all students and to not have students in 15-1 or 12-1-1 special classes. Um, when you have students spread out across 
every single grade level, you can't split one special education teacher and say, you're going to support a child in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, you know, do the math. Um, so districts that are doing that and doing it well are hiring many additional special ed teachers. Typically, they're having a special ed teacher at every grade level to support that. Um, so we're nowhere near that. Um, you know, we're thin. Um, so, you know, inclusion is always in our minds, but in order to do it effectively, you need people. So um, the out-of-district programs, um, we still tap OHM BOCES for um, students that need more specialized programs. Um, so OHM BOCES, um, one of the biggest hiccups really since COVID has been the wait list. We, we can't get into certain programs and we have kids on wait lists for sometimes the full school year. So then you're doing a lot of, um, you know, backfilling to try to support their needs when you don't have an appropriate program for them. Um, we had to reach out to Madison Oneida BOCES and Herkimer BOCES more than ever before. Um, for some students, we are sending referrals to like, up to seven different agencies to try to get a kid off of a wait list. So um, in, in it's, OHM BOCES is definitely working to fix this. It's not, um, they don't want this to be happening for districts. Um, staffing shortages are, you know, if you look on OLAS and see how many um, positions are, are open for teacher assistants, special education teachers, teacher aides, it's enormous with the BOCES. So um, that's, you know, they're not able to open classrooms if they don't have the staff to do it. So um, so we're still accessing many of the same programs through BOCES. Um, we also access um, UCP, which is now Upstate Caring Partners. We access the House of the Shepherd, Pathfinder Village, which is out in, um, oh, thank you. Um, out in Edmiston, um, and we do access a lot of additional ARC school to work programs. Um, so for, for kids, typical kids in high school, they can access SABA, um, School and Business Alliance, and very easily navigate um, vocational experiences, um, you know, explore, oh, I'm gonna shadow an engineer for a day. For students with disabilities, this is extremely challenging. Um, SABA doesn't exactly work for them. So the ARC provides another layer of services that's more tailored to students with disabilities. Um, they offer um, uh, individual mentoring you know, for a child that has very specific needs and interests. So they can take a student um, individually X amount of times per year um, out to vocational sites and really train them um, even things like, you know, hygiene and conversation, things like that, but it's very, very individualized. Um, there are other programs, um, foundations, options, like after high school, and, and some of these are, they're paired um, on college campuses, Utica College um, or MBCC, and then they, they're learning job ready skills and then they go out into the community to access those different vocational sites. Um, and those programs work fantastically for students with disabilities. So, um, we, we rely on those quite a bit. Pass back over to you all. Okay, so here are the numbers. Um, that's our total enrollment, which is 914 students. Of that, our school-aged students who are identified as having a disability, there are 143, and preschoolers, there are 24. That brings our average to 15.6%. The state average is 13%. Um, so really those, those first seven things that we talked about is how we're going to get to that, having the supports in place so the kids can stay, the kids can be successful is how we would like to see that number go to as well as it. In, in, um, in the, most children are identified in the elementary school. Um, and I know that Mr. Putnam is working very hard on, um, implementing a new intervention system. Um, and so the goal really is to make sure that kids have, have access to that, those, the quality instruction and very closely monitored interventions. And it doesn't happen in a six month time frame. It may take one year, two years, three years. Um, growth is growth. Kids are making progress. Um, and it doesn't mean um, that if that growth is slow, that students have disabilities. So um, it's it's a big task um, to keep track of that because it's easy in a meeting just to be like, 
learning disability, learning disability. So um, it's a big task to um, make sure all of the appropriate steps are being taken before classifying the student. Um, um, okay, I'm going to just review um, a little bit about the special education staff that we have in district. Um, some of the highlights are some changes. Um, we did have um, in the elementary school, we had um, a teacher's aide that was working directly with two specific students, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 each. Um, and that um, has been phased off of their IEPs. And so that position was phased out. Um, we also have um, in the middle school, we are down um, due to the, the uh, budget discussions earlier. Um, there was only one teacher assistant in the middle school, um, pushing in and supporting students. And, um, and that um, teacher assistant, because we're also down a Title I reading teacher in the middle school, we're going to try to tap that teaching assistant to support special ed students and also that Title I reading in the middle school, which is a tall order, um, but um, that's the plan. Um, and a little bit about um, just the space planning. Um, we also, I'm sure you're fully aware of this, um, lost the UCP classrooms, the integrated preschool classrooms that were in the bottom end of the elementary school, as well as the Head Start classroom. Um, in my opinion, it's a huge loss. Um, it was it was a great setup having those classrooms there, being able to get eyes on kids that were coming into our very own kindergarten. Um, and I think it was also a, a great comfort for um, families in the community to have those services right within their home school district. So um, those classrooms have been um, sent you know, over to West Merlin or down to the armory. And um, I think that's going to be challenging for a lot of families. Um, so that's a big loss. Um, and I think that is just about it. Um, I mean, there's a lot, a lot more meat to that, but those are the, the highlights. Do you have any questions for us? Hey, just one, one comment. You mentioned earlier we have an increased number of students attending our CSE meetings. How about parent participation? Are we pleased? I, you probably have a parent advocate that would act in the absence of a parent, right? Um, Do we have parents that are willing to serve, or not serve, but to sit at their child meetings? Um, I would say that since COVID um, and the um, increase in using virtual meetings, we we definitely got more parent participation. Um, it's sketchy sometimes because you're running a meeting, you have a parent on the phone, driving on the freeway, eating Burger King, <laughs> but you're, you know, you're trying to get that information out to them. So I would say when we were fully in person, we were losing ground with having parents participate. Having the ability to call in, do it virtual has definitely bumped parent, um, parent participation. How often are the students exposed to their um, jobs outside? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> um, it, definitely in the high school. Um, you know, I'd love to back that up to the middle school even more. Um, but the high school is hopping. They're all over the place. They're getting great exposure. Which was, correct me if I'm wrong, you've worked with Gabby, the previous counselor, to start that in the middle and even elementary school to some extent, all right? They're not, um, they're, they're exploring careers and discussing them, but they're not out on job sites right. or, you know, things like that. But as they age up, they're definitely out of the building. I did have one question. You mentioned that in some instances, it could take up to a year to place a student into the appropriate program. What does that year look like for that student? Well, <laughs> extremely difficult um and i mean it can be a child that has significant behavioral needs that are trauma-based um it can be a child that has autism that there are no openings for and so it's still our obligation to put some type of a program together um it is rough, disruptive for parents um the the one particular parent that i'm thinking of is a saint for um and I don't want to say tolerating because I, we were doing the absolute best we possible, possibly could, but um, that, that parent was a saint, um, you know, for 
for supporting us as much as they could. So it's an extremely rough year. And then and then that following year, when you get the child into a program, it is all hands on deck because that kid really lost a year of a really good instruction. So. And especially with the preschool kids, that's really a problem for preschool kids. There are 200 kids without the services that they need because you know preschoolers get speech or OT or PT and there are no providers. So they just aren't getting it until they get into a program where some of that stuff could be taken care of and maybe they'll go into kindergarten ready. Instead, they can't, they just can't get the people to provide service. Speech is the biggest need in preschool. And then also um, the integrated preschools. Back in the day, and I can't even think of how many years back it was that BOCES had um, their own integrated preschools. Um, and now we rely on um, um, other agencies for that, UCP basically. Um, and there, there is a waiting list of like upwards of 200 kids that are waiting to get into an integrated preschool setting. And then when you can't get them into that setting, we're recommending things like a SIA teacher, special education itinerant teacher. Um, there are there are wait lists. <laughs> so we're recommending things that are um, are pretend, basically. And then when kids come into kindergarten and we knew that they should have gotten speech three times a week and they had all of these academic and cognitive delays and then they walk into kindergarten and we, we can support them, but it's a lot of lost time. It's not unique to us. It's just yes. situated yeah. everywhere. And I'll add to those 200 students she's talked about. She's advocated, we've advocated in both seats to bring these programs back. But um, one of the issues is just staffing. They just don't have mm -hmm. individuals out there to teach. I mean, it's, it's industry reason. And, and to go on, you, you know as well as I do, not every district and not every board of education is as supportive as we are because um, from the BOCES component, if you do find the staff, Middle Settlement Road building is full to capacity. So they can rent space at other locations, including Sequoia Valley, including other districts. However, not every district is willing to transport their student to that alternative location. So we're working, we have districts working against each other because we can open a program if you can find the staff but not everybody wants to transport two students, say to Westmoreland mm -hmm. or to Waterville. It, it, it's a difficult decision for districts to make, mm -hmm. but that that's helping create that constraint that Trace is referring to in a while. Um, hopefully next year, I hope it's gonna be a little bit better for us, especially if we have the opportunity to use some of our space. But again, if the, if the staff is, is, is secured and you have the space, trying to convince the other districts to come to Sequoia isn't easy mm -hmm. because that, that may be another bus run, another bus driver, another bus that they don't have. It's, it's a quagmire, yeah. but we're doing, you guys are doing a great job. Not every superintendent is as supportive as Mr. Stakeman's and this board of education, because if the committee makes a decision, a, a recommendation, they may come and say, no, we, we can't do it. We're doing uh West Frankfurt with the charter school. We're already doing BOCES. We're already going to Lincoln Ave Academy. Now you're asking us to send another bus somewhere else. Districts are forced to say no. And that creates a back, uh, the back, the, the backup. Yeah. And I want to say too, when I referenced like we can't tap our own BOCES for programs and we're reaching out to Madison and I have BOCES for BOCES. That's a transportation issue too, you know. Right. If you know, we have a year where we don't have anyone going to Herkimer, and then all of a sudden we need a whole new bus run going to Herkimer or a whole new bus run going to Madison and Night OCs. That's that's a challenge. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Safety plan? Safety plan? Yes. So each year we update our district wide safety plan, we present it to the board, and then it goes out to the public for a 30 day public comment period. And after that, then we will, we will approve the, the plan. So I'm just, I'm just going to reveal it very quickly. So this plan, the current one is on our website right now. So it always needs to be posted on the website. Um, I'm just going to highlight a couple of updates that were initiated this year. I have seen this one. So 
I just, I'll just walk through this if I'm going too fast, slow down and ask questions. But essentially, it's a plan just to address emergency and violent incidents. Um, obviously, there's, there's a list of members here. We had to add, so one of the requirements this year was that they, we added a bus driver and or monitor. So we've added Jeanette Lewis, who's the dispatcher, but also serves as a bus driver. And then someone from an outside organization, so Tara Rader, the president of the BTO member, outside member this year. Um, again, there's there's a public comment required here. Just a list of risk reduction prevention strategies. So some of these items here are um, addressed through our annual training that staff have, have to undergo. Staff undergoes three, three and a half hours to send almost of training every year, annual training that they have to conduct at the beginning of the school year. And so a lot of these topics are covered through those trainings. This is new right here. So Every time now we hold a drill in school, we will have to notify parents that a drill is upcoming. And so at the beginning of the school year, we will send out a parent square message to inform the community that this is a new requirement from SED. But then when the principals start planning their drills, their building drills, they will be required now to send out messages to all the parents saying, we're going to have a drill soon. So fortunately or unfortunately, parents are going to get a lot more communication this year specifically related to drills. And they call them trauma-informed drills because they want to make sure that nobody gets over anxious during these drills. Every time a, a drill is addressed through the PA system, the first thing we will say is, from your term, this is a drill. We will now follow directions for a lockdown drill. This is only a drill. We have to make them very aware on the speaker system that it's only a drill because, again, they don't want any students or staff certainly to uh, if anxious would be yeah, thought that maybe it's not a drill, so we have to be very clear. Uh, again, just some more you know, strategies to make sure everything is safe, everyone wears some D bags, visitor policy, visitors sign in. Um, again, if I'm going too fast, let me know. Um, these just list, list some of our responses. You know, we meet regular, not regularly, probably not as, as often as we should, but just to talk about how we how we will we'll respond. Last year, the principals, Tracy and I, went down to the Will Bell Fire Department because that's an evacuation site. Um, in the next few days, we'll be meeting with members of police agencies because one of the new requirements with our building plans is that we have to physically hand the plan to a, a member of three different police agencies. So we're, I think we've identified the New York State Troopers, the New York Hartford Police Department, and the United County Sheriff's Office. Um, but that's, as I said, that's a new requirement that three agencies have to be and this plan. And all the troopers as well have, and I'm sure you notice they have Bob access to the building. So you'll often see troopers stopping at the buildings throughout the summertime just to check their Bob, make sure they work. And unfortunately, with the uh, the power outage the other day, the alarms were tripped. And so a uh, police officer showed up on campus um, to respond to that, which I'll, I ran over here. It was good to see that they responded. It was unfortunate that they had to do that with a tripped alarm, but those things happened. But, but just the thought that they were here within two minutes of the alarm going out was was comforting. <clears throat> um, I want to show you so so the appendix the appendices start here, and this is just a list of the buildings. What you'll see with the the pandemic safety plan. So the next portion, in fact, a majority of the safety plan was all initiated during the uh, the pandemic, the COVID pandemic. So a lot of the things that are in place are related to not just pandem um, the COVID pandemic, but potential new um, health emergencies. So we have, you know, we have lists of essential job duties, what the responsibilities are, um, protocols for communicating and, and working from home if necessary, mobile devices, how we allow students to gain access to um, Internet, if needed, when needed. I believe at the beginning of the year, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Reed, Ms. Fashidi, we will send out uh, a survey to students and parents asking about their internet connectivity and their internet capacities. And then again, we've got some strategies in place should we need to provide that service to students. Uh, personal protective equipment, again, a majority of this plan is all related to initially the COVID pandemic, but again, potential health emergencies, how students um, 
will work from home, how we will communicate, how we will teach them from remote platforms, um, how we will clean the building and appropriate some of the agencies that we connect with during emergencies. This is a, a sample of the special patrol officer agreement that we have with your Hattie County Sheriff's Office. This is initiated and re, um, <clears throat> reviewed and signed every, every year. Sometimes it's not completed before the start of the school year, but eventually it gets done. Again, every building, every district has to have an emergency road remote instruction planning just in the event of a, another crisis as we experienced with um, COVID. And those details are computer devices, wiring kind of connectivity, what our plans would be to ensure that all students have this um, capability. And then each building has to come up with a daily schedule that they would have to follow in the event that students were learning remotely. Again, a lot of that was not new. It was initiated during COVID and it's, it has to remain intact um, as a safety plan just in the event of a future crisis. Let's just get you, obviously, special education related services is a big part of this plan. Again, there are still instructional hours you need to meet and then school meals, they were provided during COVID different packages with different schools. But that's the plan. As I said, it's currently on our website. And once we approve this tonight um, to go to a public comment, this updated version will be placed on the website for public comment. As I said, sit there 30 days and then we have to approve it. And then we all have to place this into a portal on the New York State website. The, the principals have to submit a building plan and then I have to submit the district level. Any questions on this? As I said, if you want to go back and look at this, it is on the district website. David, back toward the beginning of this, um, there was something about bully proofing, bully proofing our schools. Is there, um, are there any notes in this safety plan specifically to the bullying or like anti-bullying or um, like a certain, I know like in our handbook. So, yeah, I mean, most of that's covered in the code of conduct. Okay. How do we address because I know in our handbook we have um, there are cell phone policies and there are it's like a breakdown and this is just I'm trying to do it from memory a breakdown of um, first offense second offense and, and the the different levels of punishment that the kids have I don't know that we have anything in there for bullying I would love to see that in the board handbook you want it, no no oh, okay. like the student handbook so there's something in the handbook about you know like if the, a student is caught with a cell phone when they're not supposed to have it first offense might be x and then it's y and then it's z but i don't know that we have anything specifically for bullying so well, we can look at that because we do have the the dignity for all students act as well yeah you know, it's something like you know so a first time offender it might be this and then if you know if it happens again if it's a recurrent thing then we kind of go to that next step so if like we have those things in place for the cell phones i think it would be really great to have that also in place for the bullying yeah we could put that in place i would just say you know we just have to be careful because you know pulling out a cell phone is is, is something concrete that you can see the way bullying you know, um, happens. It's, it's, there's so many variations and levels. Not that we wouldn't address it, but a lot of that is relative to the situation. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it would be difficult to have bullying with a specific consequence, but certainly it's um, it's addressed. And you know, I can talk to the admin team and we can make sure it's it's more strongly worded within that handbook. All right, thank you. It seems every day you can hear Mrs. Perger on her speaker PA system. If you're anywhere on the grounds, morning and afternoon, do we have access for the high school and middle school? Is there outside to hear anything? Yeah. I don't know. Do we, Allison? Like when she does her morning announcements, are they intended to go outside? I don't know. I just push that eight one star two and. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, but it's very noticeable. And, I mean, I hear from people all the time, and they like that. You're communicating to children on a playground, recess, lunch, whatever. I, I don't know. I've never heard that. I've never heard anything come from the middle school or the high school. I believe they have the capacity to do that. They just don't have the, the need to do that. But if they page like I page, then. That's loud. That's right. I, I don't, I don't think know. it's loud. Or maybe you have fewer announcements. 
We Maybe do. Maybe that's it. We I do have fewer analysis. We only do morning and afternoon. But um, I don't think, yeah, I think it's probably louder at the one that's here for whatever reason. Yeah, it's loud and clear. No, no. <laughs> I always wonder. I mean, in, in the spring of the year, you have high school classes around the perimeter of the yes. building. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, do they have the opportunity to hear something of significant importance? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I one can answer that. One of the things that we do is we try to give every teacher who takes a class outside a radio, and, and if there's an emergency protocol or drill, we announce it on the radio so that they can hear it. Okay. Or we we have their cell phone and we text them and call them on their cell phone. But they yeah. have, yeah. I always wondered about that. Thank you, Mr. State. Anything else? <clears throat> no, no, I don't have enough Okay, we'll move on to subcommittee report. Sure. So the Border Operations Relationship Development Subcommittee met on August 5th to finalize the new board member handbook. Um, so Mike, I will share that with you. Share it electronically or I got it very very soon. I did. Okay. <laughs> better. Um, and then we also developed smart goals. And I believe that was an attachment to the email that you just sent. Um, so you know, maybe we can talk about those a little bit after the meeting, but Patty and Mike up at the board, you know, we wanted to have some some goals, some vision on, on what we were going to do. Um, some of us to talk to, wanted to address in the upcoming year. So, so I hope you all read those and enjoyed those. But I say we can talk about those. And that will be a quiz. Uh, <laughs> uh, the facilities and transportation subcommittee met on uh, August 6th. And I'll just have a few notes from that. Uh, Regarding the grounds, I, I'm sure most of you by now have seen, if not in, in person, but through photos that they painted the entrance to the elementary school main office and the uh, cafeteria, and they'll be painting ceiling outside the entrance to the district office for this week. Uh, the tennis courts have been resurfaced now and the lines all painted, and I think they're just waiting for a, a dry day to get the nets up now. So that's <laughs> Um, but if you haven't seen them, I, I think they look they look pretty. Uh, inside the press box, they put up new new walls, um, new boarding up there because if, if you didn't know it was all wallpaper and it was red, it just didn't look very professional up there. So Scott's crew has done a, a great job. Uh, let's see if I can see. We have a new mechanic. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. I don't want to go to the bus garage yet. We have, we just purchased a machine that will allow us to paint lines, not only on the fields, but also in the parking lot. So we can strike our own parking lot. So we can see how that, that works out. It's, it's a walk behind, so it'll take a little longer, but um, we're gonna see if we can. It's definitely useful on the fields. We're just not sure scope of how we can utilize it in the parking lot, but we're going to try to save us certainly some money if we can do it ourselves. Um, oh, the walkway to the, the town of Paris Park, it was done today. Yes, it's done today. I have pictures, but I heard you saw it. So hopefully <laughs> that won't hold up and you'll hear positive comments. That's, That's one lesson. I can't get a complaint on that anymore. Well, you know, no one's going to complain on that anymore. It's great that you're out there and, and, oh, that you, and they come to you with these issues. So I appreciate Let it. me tell you guys what it was. The town paved up to a certain point for the fence coming off the park. So if you park in the park and you want to come to an event, the, the parking lot and then a walkway is paved right to the fence. Well, our walkway ended maybe five feet. And what it was, it was a puddle collector. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a good rain, that puddle stays there. And what happens is when you walk through the gate, there's nowhere to walk left or right. You have to go in the puddle or jump the puddle. Well, 70, 80, I mean, anybody isn't, not everyone's capable of jumping the puddle. And we hear about that all the time. But they put stone in a few years ago. That that corrected part of it, but now they paved it. So anybody coming that parks in the town park to an event isn't going to jump a puddle to get in the stadium. <laughs> it, it seems like pettiness, but it, no more puddle jump. <laughs> <laughs> but for the people that had to do it, it was annoying to them because they couldn't do. It. And you can't say, "Well, I can sidestep." You can't go around it because it's the width of the fence. Right. Anyway, it was done today, David. Thank you. Sure. Well, thank you for. Bring it into our attention. So we did it, the town and the school. The school did it. it was the all okay. But the, I don't know. 
This is the town could have paid more. It's all good. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It didn't happen. I brought it to you once. It didn't happen, but it's over. The straight lines that we're going to now paint itself. Yeah. Not me, because I can paint it. So. <laughs> Sure. And then just on the uh, transportation side, um, we have recently hired uh, a new bus driver, so we still need one to fill all the spots before the uh, school year runs. So we're currently operating with a couple of subs. But um, let's see, we do. We just recently hired a new mechanic in the transportation department. He's working out very well. He had experience working on uh, diesel engines, so it's been good. Exchange for us. And last year, after the you know after the budget vote, we voted the committee voted to purchase two buses. We still don't have those buses from last year, but we met with Leonard Bus, and it was a supply issue. It wasn't Leonard Bus, but we anticipate having them in October slash November. And then the two that we approved at, at the recent um, budget vote, we should have those by the end of the year. So by the end of the year, we should have four brand new school buses. That's exactly, and then the electric school buses should be. Oh wait, I'm trying. To try. All right, and that's all I have for that um, subcommittee report. And then the uh, policy committee we just met right before this this meeting, and we will be sending forward about ten policies for you to approve at the next meeting. And oh, I'm sorry, last the uh, the school boards institute i didn't i didn't see it yet but i just got an email today with the uh, calendar for the upcoming meetings for school board institute mm -hmm. so you know tony nicotera is our our representative from the board mike's the alternate mike sacco the alternate but i think correct me if i'm i think there are some general meetings that other yeah. board members can attend yes right without yeah and I'll, I'll let everyone know as they can you know okay you want to copy jordan oh, yeah great <laughs> all right, and that's it for all. That be a plan. Thank you. Any old business, Board of Education? If not, we'll move into new, new, new business. Wait, I, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. We jumped over superintendent. Oh, I thought you covered that. Oh, sorry. I just didn't ask. No? Okay. I'll do an ounce. Go ahead. Um, so just look at the uh, the subcommittee list in front of you. I, I think those are all set, but if you want any modifications made, please let me and or let me know. Um, logo update. I, I think I shared photos previously of some of the banners and the window decals, and there are some banners up in the stadium as well. So a lot of positive feedback on, on those, so we're excited um, with those. And oh, last night, so the Clayville Fire Department, New Hartford, actually about five or six different fire department agencies came here to conduct some training with. Uh, Helicopter actually flew up here on the city just to learn about that process with the rescue helicopter. And they've actually asked if they can designate our baseball field as a regional location for helicopter rescues because it's because it's a flat wide open service area surface. Sure. They love the gate because onlookers is a, is a big issue when, when accidents happen. They were talking about one time they had to land a helicopter on a road. And there are people driving right by the helicopter. They didn't even stop. And the, the biggest issue was they were pulling out their phones, taking video of the helicopter. And 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 the one lady said that it's car came pretty close. And if they hit the helicopter, they'd all be dead. Get approved. Um, so so they love the, the ball stick with the built-in gate and just the location and centrally located. So got access roads. So they've asked if they would do that area for them to uh, utilize for helicopter So we're okay with that. And so today, represented from Judica National, who conducts our, our risk assessment, they, they ensure our, our building. They've held a meeting with, with uh, Adam Crossman Transportation Supervisor, Scott Gillette, the uh, Director of Facilities Advisor, Charlie, and me, and asked us a bunch of questions uh, about our, our risk, our safety, our claims, the resource officer, and everything. And then they conducted a walkthrough with Scott Gillette, and everything went well. And I, I would just like to know, um, so I talked to Scott afterwards. He said they made no on-the-spot recommendations. So, you know, the gentleman will type out the report and send it back to us. But as far as I speak, he saw no on-the-site recommendations. And I do want to give a shout out to Ryan Decker because the gentleman today told Scott that he's conducted over 100 walkthroughs and he's never seen stage rigging locked up. And Ryan Decker locked up the stage rigging. So this is the first time. 
So I did shoot Ryan in the back, so I felt like I gave him a shout out to him. So I appreciated his sense of energy and uh, safety. Oh, he's good to hear good things. All right, that is all I have for the Okay, <laughs> you now we'll move into new business, and I will read 7.1 through 7.2. Three two, right, right? Okay, seven point one is looking for the board's approval to appoint a teacher at the kindergarten level. Seven point two is looking to appoint a special education teacher. Seven point three is looking for the approval of a mentor teacher. Seven point four is looking for the approval of a choreographer. Seven point five is looking for the approval of a permanent appointment data processor one. 7.6 is looking for the approval of our auto mechanic. 7.7 .7 is looking for the resignation of a teacher. 7.8 is looking for the appointment and approval of an English teacher. 7.9 is looking for the approval of a lead teacher. 7.10 is looking for the approval of a Spanish teacher. 7.11 is looking for the approval of a lead teacher. 7.12 is looking, the looking for the approval of the lead teacher. 7.13 is looking for the approval of an appointment of a long-term substitute teacher in the area of Spanish. 7.14 is looking for the approval of a substitute teacher. 7.15 is looking for the approval of a resignation. 7.16 is looking for the approval of a resignation from the teacher aide. 7.17 is looking for the approval of a substitute teacher aid. 7.18 is looking for the approval of a substitute teacher. 7.19 is looking for the approval of instructional technology coach. 7.20 is looking for the approval of a resignation. 7.21 is looking for the approval of additional athletic appointments for the fall season 2024-25 school year. 7.22 is looking for the approval of a sport combination in the area of gymnastics. 7.23 is looking for the approval of sport combination in the area of field hockey. 7.24 is looking for the approval of a sale of our surplus vehicle vehicles. 7.25 is looking for the approval of the BOCES agreement for rental of 20 classrooms. 7.26 is looking for the approval of an agreement with BOCES for ancillary services. 7.27 is looking for the approval of an agreement for facility use and provision of ancillary services. 7.28 is looking for the approval of extracurricular activity report. 7.29 is looking for the approval of our minutes of the July 9th, 2024 meeting. 7.30 is looking for the approval of our treasurer's report of our balances. 7.32 is looking for the approval of a resolution authorizing payment of bills as approved by the claims auditor. 7.32 is looking for the approval and committee of special education, committee on preschool special education recommendation. Does anyone have any items of concern? I don't have concerns. I just like to talk very carefully about some of these hires. So some of the new hires, um, and in fact, Michelle, Abby and I were talking about this today. We're very excited with some of the new staff that we're bringing in. Caitlin Slant and Special Ed Division. Um, Heather Larrabee, who's already been here, with us, making her permit. She's been an outstanding addition. Um, Rob Picard, as I said, the transportation department, been a great mechanic so far. Um, Mr. Regis hired Captain Strider to replace him. So I'm sorry, Ms. Leon. Ms. Leon, that would be a big loss, but she's pursuing an administrative position in the other district, so obviously, we're supportive of that. But Captain Strider, I've been Great candidates, Jennifer McCarthy, we're adding her in our foreign language um, field. So we're, we're excited with that addition. And, and Paul Baker, again, another addition to our foreign language department. Also losing Kelly Reed, she, she would be a great TA for us, but I think she's pursuing um, nursing certification. And then obviously our director of EPS, um, Tracy Sheen, I don't even know where to start with this because as I mean, you don't need to tell you, Tracy's served a huge role in this victim for a very, very long time. Um, you know, I, I worked with Tracy long before I came to Sequoia. Her reputation is excellent. Everyone out there knows she knows 
her stuff, not just special ed, but she, you know, I mean, she just presented a 12 page plan to us and that was chock full of, of items that they addressed, but that wasn't, you know, that's not just all of her position. And as, as I said, she's director of um, pupil personnel as well. So she's got all CSC and a whole bunch of other things that she's done for the district through the last few years. So um, big shoes to fill, we're gonna miss her. It's gonna take us three hires to replace everything that she's done. But we'll, we'll figure it out. But you know what? She had an opportunity that she really couldn't pass up. So we're excited for her. And, and I'm sure we will not. We will still be in communication, even not to a few weeks. Because as I said, she built so many bonds and friendships through the district through her time here. That you can't just let that go all the time. Okay, so, Trace, thank you for everything you've done. I wish you well. I'll we'll still be over a couple more weeks to us. Work with us. If I can add to that, uh, Mr. Staten, I also had the opportunity to work with Tracy uh, over 15 years ago before I was a board member. Uh, she advocated and represented students from Sepoy Valley to, this, to the program that I was working with at that time. And uh, from the moment I met her, um, her heart, her soul, and her determination was to provide the best of services for each and every child that came before the committee and to our program. And that was obvious right, right from the beginning. I uh, served on the board with Tracy for almost 15 years now, and none of that has ever changed um, until today. I mean, you saw from the report, the services we offer, and the services we continue to extend to our families and to our students. So we're very grateful, Tracy, for all you and your commitment. Uh, and adding to that, I will abstain from 7.9 in voting. Anyone else? Um, I, I, think, yes. I do want to add, it's Ms. Melissa Young. I was born away when we saw the curriculum changes that she needed to see me going to high school. Um, it was super engaging, all of the stuff. I don't know how many other people were there. Incredible. It, it's I'm so sad. So that is that is was quite a loss as well as Tracy. I mean the years of service that you can keep. Um one other thing I do want to say, and I know we talk about this a lot. Um aside from the fact that I'm very happy to see if there's going to be a full cloud deployed again. Um we talk a lot about volunteers. A lot, right? Hard to get volunteers. You see Johnny Domenico's name on here, like, love it. His dad, his brother, big in the community. Like, how do we do more of this? Obviously, this is something that's ingrained, but like, how do we do this? Right? We talk all the time about it. Big props for, for stepping up. His parents mm -hmm. by example. I think that's where you get it from. Go to, they don't even have kids in our district anymore. And they're at the baseball field and every single day, yeah. coaching, running concession stands, volunteer, right? Yeah. Like that's that's the key. It's like he's not being paid to yeah. spend his time in volunteering for a sport he loves mm -hmm. and his school district that he loves. And it served his country, then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. still does. Still, like, yeah. yeah. still active. Good to hear, Mrs. Why don't thank you? Anyone else? Need a motion to approve 7.1 through 7.32, please. Okay. Need a second? Second. Thank you, Patty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion's approved. With one abstention. Okay. What would you like me to do with tax rolls authorization? Do I need to read that? You would do the same thing as you just did. We'll approve item eight. We'll move together. Okay. Um, item eight is to confirm the tax rolls and authorize the tax levy. And 8.2 is the approval to execute the tax warrant. 
And that would be it, right? Mm -hmm. Eight one and eight two. May I have a motion, please? Mr. Patel, second. Mr. Sacco, all in favor? Motion to approve. And we'll move into miscellaneous topic. I have one item of correspondence I'd like to read to the board, please. Dear Tony and members of the Board of Education, as you are aware, I am taking a new position outside of the district in September. This was not an easy decision, but it's good for me, both personally and professionally. Serving this district for almost 23 years has been an incredible experience, and I am deeply grateful for the opportunities. I have had to work alongside such dedicated professionals and be part of an amazing community. Over the course of my tenure, I have witnessed the unwavering commitment of the Board of Education to the success and well being of our students. I wish to extend my sincere thanks to each of you for your support and collaboration throughout my time here. I also look forward to hearing about the continued success of the district, as I know you place significant value on programs that serve the district, our students. With appreciation, Tracy Fashim. Thank you, Tracy. It was very thoughtful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Public to be heard? Absolutely. Yep. I want to do about um, Amazon, et cetera, wish lists for teachers and being able to post them to our school website. You know, obviously, you know, we're all paying for school supplies. I see we all, I think everyone's. <laughs> um, we're all buying school school supplies. We know they're very expensive. We know, you know, the cost of inflation everywhere is ridiculous. Um, I think, you know, last year they were posted and I might have donated four of them. <laughs> um, tissues, hand sanitizer, glue, crank, whatever it is, right? Like whatever it is that teachers need for their needs. Um, a lot of teachers post their links online, whether it's Facebook, et cetera, for people to be able to donate or items that are sent directly to school or the teacher. Is that something that we can do? Can we get a pin board where like if our teachers have Amazon wish lists that we can post that not only for our site but to our Facebook? Um yeah I thought yeah I had that written down I was going to talk about it later but that's not later. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ms. Babby, my daughter got her books today. She was excited about Shutter Island as I was. So I just wanted to give you a shout out. So thank you. You are very welcome. People both enjoyed that. That and two other books. 17 now. So here's what it is. Get ready. Yes, sir. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay, I need a motion to adjourn for executive session. Give up negotiation. For what day? Negotiation. Negotiation. CJ? Thank you. Second? Mr. All in favor? Thank you, folks. We stand adjourned for executive session. We did a drawing behind closed doors earlier. So we have to make the other one in second. Wow. <laughs> I'll give you one more. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about it.